All right, let's start off section uh, 2.4 with some examples. So I'm looking at exercise number 42 on page 196, and we're asked to find all the zeros of the following polynomial. And that polynomial is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x plus 13. Now, we're going to start out, start this pretty much the way we started solving polynomials in the last section with the rational roots theorem. So we're going to look at the factors of the constant term, 13, divided by the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1, because since there's no number there, putting 1 in front doesn't change anything. 1 times x cubed is still just x cubed, the x cubed without the 1. So our leading coefficient is 1, and that goes on the bottom. Our constant term, 13, goes on top. And this is pretty straightforward. The factors of 13 are just 1 and 13. And the factors of 1 are simply just 1. Which means if this polynomial has any rational roots, they are among the following. 1 over 1 is just 1. 13 over 1 is just 13. So. If this polynomial has any nice roots, they are either plus 1, minus 1, plus 13, or minus 13. It can't have any other nice roots other than uh, some of those listed here. All right. Well, again, I would recommend a graphing calculator to help pinpoint which one of these are going to be helpful, or uh, which one you should try first with synthetic division which is our next step. I, however, am going to use my instructor's edition and cheat like a fiend. And I see that trying x equals minus 1 is going to be rather productive. So I put minus 1 on the outside and write down the coefficients. 1x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x plus 13. And go through with synthetic division, hoping to get a 0 as a remainder. Drop the 1, multiply 1 by minus 1 to get minus 1, add minus 5 with minus 1 to get minus 6, multiply minus 1 times minus 6, and I get 6. 7 plus 6 is 13. This is looking good. Minus 1 times 13 is minus 13. And when I add, get 0. Good. So we found we've got a 0. That means uh, we keep going until we hit three numbers and a 0. But We've got one, two, three numbers, and a zero. So we stop here and realize that we've gone from a cubic to a quadratic. So this is 1x squared minus 6x plus 13 equals zero. And solving this, we'll find the remaining two zeros of this polynomial and finish the work we need to do. So this isn't going to factor. Uh, I can see that already from experience and from the answers that the book is giving. So I'm going to resort to quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. 
and that is minus b is minus 6, so minus a minus 6, plus or minus minus 6 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13, and that's all over 2 times 1, a, 2 times a. Minus a minus 6 is just 6. Minus 6 squared is the same thing as 6 squared. It's 36. Multiplying by 1 does nothing, so this is just 4 times 13, which is 40 plus 12, which is 52. Divided by 2. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, what is that, uh, 16? Minus 16, that is, divided by 2. So minus 16 can be broken up into, square root of minus 16 can be broken up into the square root of 16 times the square root of minus 1. And using our new friend i, we can now write this as square root of 16 is just 4, and square root of minus 1 is i. Now, putting the 2 under everything, 6 over 2 plus or minus 4 over 2i, we are left with 3 plus or minus 2i. Notice if we prohibited, you know, square roots of negatives, we'd only have one zero here. But when we allow ourselves i, when we allow ourselves to use complex numbers, we end up with three zeros. That's kind of interesting that we have three zeros and a degree three polynomial. And since I'm so keen on pointing out that these zeros correspond to factors, namely x equals minus one corresponds to x minus a minus one, the 3 plus 2i corresponds to x minus 3 plus 2i. And the 3 minus 2i corresponds to x minus parentheses 3 minus 2i. And if you multiplied all that out and simplified, you'd get back to that polynomial. Let's try another one. Let's try one where we have, yeah, let's try something like 48. I don't want another cubic, I want a fourth degree polynomial. So we're going to start with x to the fourth, and then on uh, 48, which is what I'm looking at, we have x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 7x squared plus 9x minus 18. Now, we're going to start off by finding the nice roots, the roots that are, you know, nice fractions. Or at least nicer than things with square roots and i's in them. So we're looking at the rational roots. So unfortunately, we've got to look at the factors of the constant term here is 18, it's minus 18, but we're going to add the plus or minuses later, so it doesn't really matter whether we take the minus or not. Over the factors of, once again, our leading coefficient not being there means our leading coefficient is 1. So factors of 18 are not going to be small. They're going to be 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. And if I divide those by 1, I'm not going to change any of them. You know, anything divided by 1 is just itself. So these are all the possible nice roots of our polynomial here on exercise 48. 
plus or minus 9, and plus or minus 18. So just plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, 6, 9, plus or minus 18. Again, graphing calculator will help you very much in quickly identifying which one of these might be zeros and which ones aren't. I am going to cheat as usual and use synthetic division as well as my instructor's edition. So, I see from my instructor's edition that minus 2 is going to be a good candidate for this. So if I look at, write down the coefficients, 1x to the fourth, 1x cubed, 7x squared, 9x, and minus 18. Now do synthetic division. So start off on the left, you know, to the, uh, you know, to the far left, except, you know, staying on the right of the line here, drop the leading coefficient, drop the 1, multiply by minus 2, 1 times minus 2 is minus 2, add to get minus 1, multiply by minus 2, and I get uh, plus 2, 7 plus 2 is 9, minus 2 times 9 is minus 18, 9 plus minus 18 is minus 9, minus 2 times minus 9 is a plus 18, and when I add, I get 0. Excellent. I've found, as I expected I would, because I'm cheating, I found that x equals minus 2 is a 0 of this function, of this polynomial. But I'm not at the stopping point yet. I don't have one, two, three numbers and a zero. I've got four numbers here. So I'm going to continue from right here. And using my instructor's addition, I see that trying x equals one seems to be a decent choice. So drop the one again. 1 on the outside times 1 below is 1 above the line. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 9 plus 0 is 9. 1 times 9 is 9. Minus 9 plus 9 is 0. Excellent. That's another 0, as I expected because I'm cheating. And now 1, 2, 3 numbers and a 0. Good. I'm at my stopping spot. So now I have my quadratic. I have 1x cubed, or sorry, 1x squared plus 0x plus 9, and I want to solve this to see when is this equal to 0, because the zeros here will leave me, will, sh will be the final two zeros on 48. Uh, 0x, I can simplify that. This is just x squared plus 9 equals 0. Well, this is quite nice. I just have an x squared and no x, which means you could do quadratic formula and, you know, your b would be 0 in this case, but we can do something a little bit simpler as well. If we subtract 9 from both sides, then take square roots, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of minus 9. And minus 9 can be written as square, or square root of minus 9 rather, can be written as square root of 9 times square root of minus 1, which allows us to use complex numbers. Square root of 9 is 3, and square root of minus 1 we're calling i. So that means we have 1, 2, 3, huh, 4 four zeros, x equals minus two, x equals one, x equals three i, and x equals minus three i. One, two, three, four, degree four. That was nice. Same number of zeros as roots. And the factors, x minus a minus two, 
x minus 1, x minus 3i, and x minus a minus 3i. So p of x factors like this. Each of the zeros corresponded to a factor of p of x. So finding all the zeros is the same thing as completely factoring p of x. There's another thing that's really interesting. Remember when we talked about conjugates of complex numbers? You know, the conjugate of a plus bi was a minus bi. That was the conjugate. Well, I got 3i minus 3i. 3i and minus 3i are conjugates. 3 plus or minus 2i. 3 plus 2i, 3 minus 2i are conjugates. This is very interesting. I'm always coming out with the number of zeros that I have is the degree of the polynomial. And if I have any complex roots, they always come in conjugates. This, it turns out, is absolutely no coincidence.